Bob, welcome back to BizJet TV. Great to have you here. So, uh, you know, we've come out of COVID. Well, most of the lockdowns now are ending. People are starting to travel again. Um, more people are traveling by private jet. More people are chartering, leasing, buying jets. Uh, so the private jet industry has really uh, got given a big boost because of this whole COVID thing. Um, so what's happening in your world in relation to private jets uh, now that people are starting to fly again? Okay. Um... Good to see you again, Fabrizio. Yeah, private jets, I, I believe the usage has increased considerably. And a lot of the reason for this is people used to perceive it as considerably more expensive than traveling first class. But do you know what if two or three people are traveling together? It's not more expensive at all. But I think what people are protecting against now is I think governments around the world have got everyone so terrified against viruses and in yeah. particular, the COVID-19 virus, yeah. that nobody wants to stand in a queue near anyone else at an airport or anywhere else. With private jets, you can turn up at a private airfield. You don't tend to wait in queues. You tend to keep it with your family together and you protect yourself from the virus. And, and I think I understand that governments have to stress the importance and, and the danger of the virus. But even now, where the virus is, is not quite dead and gone, but I'm based in London, and you can go on the underground, there are still lots of people wearing masks. You can see it on public transport, on buses, and that kind of thing. You can see people walking through Hyde Park on their own, yeah. on a summer or a spring day, still wearing a mask. So the fear of the virus is still in there. But traveling by private jet, you're mixing with your people or your family in your little circle. You are cocooned. I know at the um, at the beginning of the lockdown, when everyone was starting to take cover and dig in for the lockdown, mm -hmm. lots of our clients, they simply, if they didn't have ch private jets, they chartered them. And if the family were all around the world, they, they decided where they were going to lock down. Mm -hmm. They were going to lock down. They've got several properties, most of our clients. Where is the best place for them to lock down? Uh, a lot of people went on the super yachts. There's no way safer than a super yacht to hide from a virus. Yeah. But um, they they send private jets around the world to pick up the family, to take them to that one location that they had chosen, um, you know, for the lockdown period. And now we're coming out of lockdown. I think part of it is the like the private jet experience. Mm -hmm. Part of it is the cost is a lot more justifiable. And, yeah. and, and part of it is that whilst the virus isn't as prominent as it was in world news, you know, being on the brink of World War Three, et cetera, the mm -hmm. virus isn't quite as prominent as it was, but people have still got this thing. They don't want to stand in busy queues at airports. And, uh, well, look and at what's like happening. That. I mean, now we, we, here in England, we've got, you know, the, the school break at the moment. And so everybody's rushing to get or go on holiday, to go to Greece and Spain and, you know, the Caribbean and that. And your queues at airports, even like at six in the morning, have been like five hours to get on the airplane right. from the car park. I mean, this is happening <clears> in <throat> Bristol, Manchester, Gatwick, all over the country. Um, and so do you really want to stay stand in a queue for five hours with hundreds, if not thousands of other people? I mean, the chances of catching a virus or a cold or whatever it may be are quite high in a big crowd like that. So, you know, even more scope now for, you know what, if you've got the money, just go private because you can park your car in front of the private jet terminal, walk through and get on the airplane in 10 minutes and you're in the air. And guess what? There's no, there are no queues. You just went through the terminal with your family. Maybe there's another person there going through security, but, you know, you can social distance very easily. You know, you get on the airplane, you know, there's just you and your family or your co-workers on the airplane. It's perfectly safe. And, and off you go. And you're going to get out on time as well. Um, this is the other problem that's happening now with all these delays. Uh, there was a, a story running in the papers this morning. His family got to the airport. In the end, they were waiting for eight hours and the airline decided last minute to cancel the flight. And the holiday. I, I read that report. Yeah, yes. yeah. And the holiday. So, you know, you imagine you're putting your family through all that to then get your holiday cancelled. Um, and then, you know, well, if you're flying with, with your own airplane or you've chartered a private jet, that's not going to happen. You control the airplane. But when you book a ticket with the airlines, you don't control the airline, the, the, the airline, the airplane, the, the airline controls that. So, you know, there's a is lot of this the, happening. I think the, the ease of private jets is a lot more appealing now than it used to be. And that is because of the 
increased chaos at the airports right now. I read a report a couple of weeks ago that um, EasyJet had resumed their full program in February, mm -hmm. but the paid that many staff off so many staff redundant so many gone to other careers now they cannot cover the flights and they're cancelling something like 24 flights per day i believe british airways have got similar problems they are cancelling lots of flights everywhere in british airways they are a, a national carrier if you wish so um the chaos at the airports has increased considerably mm -hmm. where so the ease of a private jet was always appealing, but I think it's more appealing now than it used to be. Yeah. Yeah, anybody that was thinking, oh, the private jet for the environment, this, that, the other, you know, that's out the window now because, you know, it is a safety issue. It is a health issue as well. Um, yes. And, 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 you know, in America, there's a lot of disruption with the airlines because they allowed a lot of pilots to take early retirement. And so now they're talking about increasing the retirement age from 65 to 68 or possibly 70. Um, but you know, a lot of these pilots that have retired, the airlines have called them back and they're saying, I'm not coming back. I mean, yeah. I'm making 15 grand a month to sit on the beach for the rest of my life as my pension. Yeah. Why would I want to go and fly an airplane? I've yeah. done, been yeah. there, help done me understand, Help me understand why you want to come back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, and so consequently the airlines are stuck that they haven't got enough pilots. Um, and so they, yeah. you know, flights are resuming and, you know, and, and there's disruption there as well. And this is happening all over the world, which is, you know, uh, an even greater case for private jet travel, which is why, you know, we're seeing inventories really low at the moment, you know, charters going through the roof. It's growing like hundred percent in certain parts of the world uh, compared to last year. So all this is happening, but let's delve more into your world of security where you work for a lot of uh, uh, prominent families and royal families and billionaires and that around the world, protecting them and keeping them safe. How has the world of security changed because of COVID and lockdowns? What's changing in your world right now? I think a lot of it, okay, a lot of the security we do is to protect against wrongdoers, to protect against people breaking into properties and stealing the contents, valuables, mm -hmm. uh, and to protect people um, against kidnap or ransom. Yeah. So this is a lot of what we used to do. But now there's another very serious perceived threat and and that is the fear of the virus okay so once upon a time um well we we do quite a bit of residential security this is when we look after someone else's house mm -hmm. we control access for the staff or the contractors etc cetera, etc cetera. so once upon a time we just used to check them in check them out and if necessary have someone accompany them around the house while they're doing the work um, but now to protect the residents of the house, the, 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 the family members, now there's a lot more stricter control going into the house, such as sanitizing hands. Um, are people vaccinated? You know, our staff need to be vaccinated. If, if clients specify that, then so be it. Yeah. Um, so the, the hygiene factors to actually enter the house are a lot stricter than they used to be. Mm -hmm. So... We're protecting against threats we cannot see, such as the virus, yep. as well as wrongdoers. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're not quite running like a hospital, but it's a lot different to what it was. And I, I think people um, I think people are going out slightly less to crowded areas. They're still going out, but they're not quite as keen to go to a crowded area. Now, obviously, there are exceptions. I'm, I'm, you know, it was the um, Champions League final last Sunday and yeah. I know people who went to that final and that sort of thing. But instead of going to a crowded event every week, now they might restrict it to once a month. So things haven't stopped, but they've played down quite considerably. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, the, the old fashioned threats are still there, but there's a few new threats as well. And we've got to control the the hygiene at access into the properties a lot more than we used to. Yeah. So and let's talk about the wrongdoers. You, you, you mentioned the wrongdoers. Are, are there more wrongdoers yeah. out there today compared to two or three years ago? Um, yes and no, because because of, of, of lockdown, they've had to improvise, adapt and overcome. So there's a lot more cyber crime than they used to be. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They've become more, you know, hackers, and, um, probably hacking that more than a lot breaking more in. cyber crime, a lot more hackers. There's some great scams. I mean, only last week the government announced um that every household would get something like a 400 pound rebate 
against gas and electric and energy charges. Yeah. And already today there are there are websites up there um, saying you know, if you want to claim your four hundred pounds from the government, fill in your forms here, give us your bank details, and set up this direct debit, and we'll get the money into your bank. So already the scammers are in there, and there's some great scammers, and very plausible ones. Yeah, and um, Bitcoin is always in in the forefront because yeah. um, you know there's there's lots of bit coin associated scams going on yeah and there's lots of things in court as well whereby people have been defrauded and with companies we work with we've managed to get uh, freezing orders on some wrongdoing companies yeah and we've actually with the companies we work with we managed to get some money back as well yeah but i think there's been a, a move the emphasis has been from um hands-on wrongdoing to virtual online wrongdoing <laughs> yeah because all these people have been locked down for so long and haven't been able to operate as normal yeah now we've also seen you know some wars and situations happen recently with afghanistan it's happening between ukraine and russia and that um have you had more requests to help you know get people out of those kind of locations and and that kind of thing and have private jets yeah. been involved in in this um <sighs> There are very difficult situations out there and there are people who need to be exfiltrated. And we are working with companies who have been getting people safely to a safe area. Uh, that's a very, very, very sensitive situation. Mm -hmm. But but obviously we've got a situation now in, in Ukraine where there are something like 6 million refugees, which is a, a, a terrible, terrible situation. Mm -hmm. but um but yes we we do work with companies and they have operations working in poland to assist these people and to get them to safe safe places within europe yeah well let's talk about you know person that's looking to buy a private jet you know a lot of these people come on to Bizjet tv to find out information you know buying their first jet how important is it for these people that are about to buy a jet and maybe they're new to money, maybe they're crypto people or they've had an online business that has really taken off nicely during COVID because more people are shopping online and that. And now they find themselves, well, now lockdowns have ended. I want to travel a bit, but I don't really want to go with the airlines and travel by private jet. How important is personal security for somebody like that? And, and what, what, have, what do you do for people like this? Okay, it, it depends where they're going to travel to in their private jet. Mm -hmm. um, we, one of our core businesses is close protection and travel security. So we travel around the world with people in private jets. We accompany them to look after them at the other end. Now it depends where you're going to. Yeah, also um, I noticed that you, another thing that you do is you also train people about security and, and, and improve their awareness. So tell us a bit about that as well. Yeah, that, that's right. A lot of um, what we do, it depends where they're going. If it's, if it's, more unfriendly than particularly hostile mm -hmm. then we might just give them one or two days hostile environment personal security awareness training mm -hmm. so they can identify any threats and avoid the threats and and then take action so they don't get themselves into trouble mm -hmm. if it is quite serious then we can send people out with them um to look after them as bodyguards or safety advisors with um camera crews we tend to send people out as safety advisors as opposed to bodyguards mm -hmm. now um you know there are safety advisors not with us but there are safety advisors out there and in, in in ukraine now looking after camera crews mm -hmm. just to make sure they don't come to any harm a lot of the time because of their own enthusiasm they're so determined following their camera to get that excellent shot mm -hmm. um they might miss something so they repeat the mantra every morning. If you didn't drop it, don't touch it, don't pick it up and don't stand on it. So that, that's it. Now, we also work quite a bit with next gen mm -hmm. when next gen are going to take the year out and travel around the world. Mm -hmm. So we'll spend a day with these people doing personal security awareness training. How not to stand out in the crowd. Uh, first of all, that watch you got for your 21st, you're going to leave that in your safe at home. 
we're going to get you something nice for, for about a hundred quid. Yeah. Um, and we're going to stop wearing all these designer clothes and we're going to have, we're going to dress down a bit so we don't attract attention to ourselves. Yeah. And how to avoid, how to identify threats and risks, how to avoid getting into trouble. And then we take it to the next level. If you do find yourself in a tricky situation, how to behave the best way to behave so you come out of that situation without so much as a scratch because the golden rule is if if you come out of a situation without a scratch mission accomplished yeah so none of this trying to jackie chan yourself out of a situation no 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 no, no, no. the worst thing you could possibly do um you want to come out in one piece yeah and and we teach them we teach people how to prevent yourself getting kidnapped but also how to behave if you do get kidnapped for example um to listen for the questions what the kidnappers are saying to you mm -hmm. so um if someone is in a negotiation to release someone they want proof of life they want proof of life that you are still alive mm -hmm. so your kidnappers might say nobody cares no one loves you nobody's helping da, 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 da. and then suddenly they need to get some information that only you know the answer to so if the question comes like when you were a child what was the did you have any pets? What was the name of your first dog? What yeah. kind of dog was it? So they've got to listen for these questions and they say, ah, right, take encouragement from that. Someone on the outside is asking for proof of life. So they are negotiating for me. Mm -hmm. So now don't resist them. Tell them the name of your first dog. Tell them what kind of it was. Yeah. <laughs> because without, without that, it's not going to move forward. Yeah. Then again, just to recap on that, Prevention is better than the cure. We'd much rather give them the training to identify the threat and avoid the threat. And, and there's obviously different techniques to that as well. So we, we normally spend a full day training with it. And it's quite funny because next gen kids, youngsters, they'll turn up and <clears throat> at the start of the day, it's pretty much arms folded and I, I'm here because my mum says I have to be here. <laughs> yeah. And at the end of the day, they've had a great day and they love it. And they, they, they think they're James Bond because they're suddenly they're a lot more aware of what is happening around them yeah. and a lot more aware of what to do. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember I've done a couple of courses like that myself and, you know, it's, it's just invaluable. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I remember one, one of the courses we did uh, all about terrorists on board. And then when I did have terrorists on one of my flights, I, I knew exactly we were on the ground. Um, you know, what had happened, you know, the, the rampage had come in the cockpit and said, oh, one of the passengers said that uh, this plane is going to crash. I said, well, where are they? They're sitting in row 20. And I said, they're there. and I knew what questions to ask. And then immediately I said, okay, can you just leave the cockpit a minute? We shut the door and counsel with my colleague. I said, okay, I think we need to get everybody off uh, and have everybody scanned and the bags and whatnot, because this sounds like, you know, this could be a, a real threat. Um, and, you know, before we, we knew it, the airplane was surrounded by, you know, tanks, <laughs> uh, Army, Navy, you name it. Um, and we were on the ground for about three and a half hours. And then we ran out of duty time. So we went home and the other another crew came to to, to do the flight. But um, I then did find out a few weeks later that these people were terrorists. They were detained for 10 days and then deported back to their, their own country. Um, so we'd done the right thing. But if I hadn't had that training, I wouldn't have known what questions to ask and I wouldn't have recognized the threat. Um, and I think that's really, really important um, to have that prevention training uh, because, you know, people are just not aware. Uh, it's like when, when I, I did a Krav Maga course a few years ago and um, I'm a black belt in Taekwondo. So I'm coming there, you know, all confident, you know, the guy within five minutes, I soon realized that everything I'd learned, I, I needed to throw out the window because if I'd been in a real situation in the street, I would have probably ended up in hospital. Um, yes. And, and he said to me, he said, you'd be you'd be surprised how many black belts end up in hospital because they've got this false sense of security. And he said, remember that a martial art is an art. It's not self-defense. Today, we're going to talk yeah. self-defense and we're going to talk about and a lot. A lot of it wasn't necessarily about punching somebody. It was being aware of threats that are around you and, and how you, your, your body language sends out messages and whatnot and, and what you could use as a weapon, whether it's a pen you know, uh, whether it's a bottle, I mean, all sorts of stuff. And so we spent two days doing that. Um, and it just opened my eyes completely to a whole new world. I thought I knew what I was doing. I didn't, believe me, I would have got myself into big, serious trouble. Absolutely. But that's one of the things, if you are, say, having dinner and there's a threat in the restaurant, pick up the table and use the table to keep the table between you and the threat. 
use a chair to keep the, the threat at a distance. Um, simple things when you know them, but you don't want it to, to be a test. You want it to be a skill if ever it happens. You don't want to think, what do I do here? You need to know exactly what to do. It's yeah. like most people who are first aid trained. Um, if they see someone who needs first aid, they don't think about it. They just do what needs to be done. They stop the bleeding or they check the airways or they do whatever needs to be done. And it's no difference with personal security. You see a threat, you know what needs to be done and you do it. And it's not until afterwards you realize you've done it. It's um, it's not a time to make it up as you go along. So no, the training is invaluable. Yeah. So would you say you know the so-called bad guys are they getting more sophisticated as technology evolves? Certainly online and technologically, yes. I mean, you can look at even petty crimes such as stealing cars and that sort of the way. These people can scan car keys inside a house and then be off with your brand new Range Rover. So, yeah, technologically, they're very clever. They're always very good. But but then again, I just mentioned car theft there. Some of the old devices like steering locks and the old mechanical devices, these are the old ones and they work very well. So let's not try to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. But you've got to think about them and you've got to do them every day because it's the same as your house. You know, you've got locks on the door of your house. You use the locks every day every time you come in and out the house it's yeah. the same with car locks you can't just nip in somewhere for two minutes yeah you've got to lock the car down properly and you can get these little um for your keys these little faraday pouches or faraday yeah. cages to put your keys in so yeah. they can't be scanned so yeah. yeah use them use them yeah so there's probably a lot more today because of technology that we need to be aware of than than maybe 20 years ago yeah, I mean, there's there's more than 20 years ago and there'll be more tomorrow. And it's it's the old story. Um, you know, if, if you know 100 ways to get around something, the crook knows 101. So you yeah. need to find out number 101 as quick as you can. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because, exactly. you know, necessity is the mother of invention for criminals as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, what kind of uh, requests than that have you had recently that, that maybe before you never had what what kind of different requests have you had recently what kind of trend are you seeing now besides the covid thing and that what we're finding quite a bit of is um due diligence on individuals on organizations and on locations by locations i mean properties and and that kind of yeah i think people are aware that scams are on the increase and people are becoming more sophisticated so now it's a case of um, people are checking the source of supply and checking out the individuals in, in great depth, more so than normal. Yeah. And, you know, this, this costs real money. If I were to do a deep dive on you and find out everything about you, takes about three weeks, costs about £6,000 plus VAT. Yeah. But people are prepared to do that because, for example, if I'm going to buy a private jet off you for £30 million, Mm -hmm. I want to know that you are the legitimate person to buy the private jet from. Yeah. If I'm going to go on business with you, if I'm going to, you know, the, a lot of people are worried about reputational damage. So if I'm going to do business with that person, are they a fit and proper person or, or am I going to be tarnished because they've got a bad reputation and a skeleton in the cupboard, cupboard somewhere? Yeah. So, yeah, with due diligence on people, organizations and locations, there's so loads of that going on right now, mm -hmm. which is which really is great because you can do that anywhere in the world. And there's so many, there's so much information to go on. You can do an open source intelligence deep dive, which is everything that is available to the general public and databases. And then, of course, you can go into the uh, gray web, deep web, dark web, mm -hmm. where there's all manner of information in there as well. Yeah. Um, but we've we we've worked with other companies who specialize in this. We've done deep dive due diligence on individuals, and the may the the information you can find out is breathtaking. I mean, if I had any hair, it would curl. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, I do I do exactly the same. I mean, uh, I, I I verify yeah. people as much as I can. I mean, you there are a, a number of people that are now coming out of the woodwork, in particular from the crypto space. 
Um, yeah. These are people that you've never heard of that you won't find by doing a search on the internet and whatever. And they suddenly come to the table saying they, they've got 25 million to buy an airplane. And you're like, oh, well, I haven't found anything out on this guy. Uh, and some of these people are very, very good at, at, at hiding themselves. And others are very honest by saying, yes, I, I just figured this out 10 years ago. And, and, and I poured a thousand dollars into Ethereum when it was when it was worth 20 cents. And now I'm sitting on 150 million dollars kind of thing. Uh, and I want to yeah. buy myself an airplane for 10 million. Um, and, and then, so the next question is, okay, um, the story stacks up, but you know, what then tells me that they're real is once they pay the retainer fee, they put some money in escrow. Oh, now they've put a million dollars in escrow. They probably have the other 9 million. They said they, they're going to spend. That's always a big sign of commitment when money ends up in your bank. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's the other, but you know, the, also what we don't want to do is we don't want to waste time talking to people that are telling us a story. And then, you know, there's no money at the end of the story. Uh, and yes. so, and and the, and the other thing is, you know, if we are, you know, helping someone buy a private jet, we need to make sure that we're not dealing with some criminal that's going to use it to go and, you know, well, all sorts of things with it. Well, yes, so you've got to do your KYC to make sure yeah. that the they, they have those funds legitimately and legally. So, uh, I mean, KYC, everyone got into KYC quite a few years ago now, mainly the banking, but then it's spilled over everywhere else. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the student's deep dive is like very intense KYC to know who you're dealing with. And, and again, you know, I mentioned reputational management as well. Mm -hmm. It would be terrible for a, for, for a legitimate upstanding person to suddenly jump in a bed business-wise with someone who's not a fit and proper person and they get their reputation tarnished. Yeah. So reputation management especially for family businesses is, is an enormous thing. And again, yeah. this is all, and all the information's out there. You just need to know where to look for it. Yeah, but sometimes in certain parts of the world, it's more difficult to find information about people. Yeah, but there are very clever people who know how to find this information. There you go. That's why you need to um, contact Bob, people that are watching. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> because we work with several different companies. They've all got their specialist fields. So, Yes, if the information's out there, we know someone who can find it. Yeah, because because I, I mean, there's only so much you can do with a Google, Google search. Then you, you need more in depth and probably technology as well to be able to find out certain things. Maybe people on the ground um, and and have that network to help you to gather the information which you have, Bob. And this is why it's so important yes. um, to you know because you just have to protect yourself, and particularly if you're you're looking at doing a deal in a country that you don't know much about and you're having to make a trip on your private jet to go out to see these people, you want to make sure that yeah. they're not trying to lead you in there. And then when you get there, they're going to kidnap you. Well, that's right. This is why you need people who can do the reconnaissance on the ground and make sure that you're dealing with a fit and proper person and that um, they're not going to hold you to ransom and steal your private jet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause planes get stolen. I mean, I, I had a guy I knew down in South Africa, he was flying, planes into Libya to do some work and the pilots landed and Tripoli went to the air to the hotel next morning they went back to the airport and the, air, the airplane disappeared they'd stolen it and they never found it it vanished yeah. so planes yeah. do get stolen um people may think oh yeah they steal planes like they steal cars um I mean there's all sorts of stuff going on in in South America and that where you know planes are stolen from the U.S. and then they're landed on some strip down in Colombia uh, or sometimes crash um we've seen those news stories and that so people yeah. do do steal airplanes. It's a lot more difficult to steal an airplane at Heathrow or JFK, um, even though someone did steal an airplane in Seattle a few years ago. I don't know if you remember that story and started doing aerobatics. I don't remember that it. one. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know how that happened. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, in, in out, outback places or third world countries, it's a lot easier to steal a plane than it is in, in, in the Western world. So if you are flying your private jet into a location like that, you need to have, a security team go there before you check this what's is, going on. This is what we would normally do. For example, um, you know, there's what, there's 53 countries in Africa, so yeah, and and some of them are relatively safe, and some of them are not. Yeah. So it depends who you're going to see, who the family you're going to see, or the business you're going to see. Is the the business legitimate? Are the family legitimate? And if you are, the best thing we might there might be one principle. And we might have two of our guys look after that one principal, but then we use the family security in that country to look after that parcel of three 
when we're in their country because they know the threats in that country. They know who the gangs are. They know what the threats and the risks are. So you've got the liaise with them. But to know that you, you can rely on their security, you need to do a degree of due diligence on the people you're dealing with. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Bob, um, it's been great having you back here on Bishop TV. Uh, we'll put the link below for your, your website and that's so people, if they need security, please reach out to Bob. Uh, I'm sure, like myself, you'll probably do a, an initial Zoom call with the person and then arrange a face-to-face -face meeting. Um, everybody's security situation is different, like the same with their travel needs. So that's why, you know, here, even on this interview, Bob can only give limited information, like same here with the private jets. So a one-to-one -one conversation to find out more about what your needs is certainly a must in my case, like it is in, in Bob's case. But anybody, if you have any questions, you want to, let's get a conversation going here in the comment box. And thank you all of you for watching BizJet TV. Remember to subscribe, click the notification bell. And thank you from Fabrizio Poli and Bob Morrison. And we'll see you next time again on the next episode of BizJet TV. Thank you. Thank you.